Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lawrence Jenkins. I'm the Dean of the College of Visual and Performing Arts here at UMass Dartmouth. And it is my very sincere, real pleasure to welcome all of you to Nancy Holt, Massachusetts. I am very thrilled to welcome all of you here uh, to Nancy Holt, Massachusetts. It's been a great afternoon so far, and I think that the uh, afternoon and the evening and the, and the exhibitions are uh, are really extraordinary. Uh, this exhibition and symposium are indebted to the support and the efforts of many, and that those many is such a broad roster that I can't really name everyone here, although credits uh, are uh, listed in the back of the exhibition brochure. Uh, Rebecca Utrell has asked me to thank a few key contributors she has modestly left herself off that list. Uh, and I want to start by thanking Rebecca Uchel for her extraordinary <laughs> for her truly extraordinary dedication uh, to this project. It is that dedication, uh, relentless really, uh, that uh, brought it to fruition. Uh, she was very ably assisted by a core team, including Vera Levitt, Shingo Kurokawa, Allison Siwan, and Michelle Bowers. I want also to thank Lisa Lefebvre and the Hope Smithson Foundation for their assistance in realizing the exhibition and for their incredible donations of materials related to Spinwinder and to Samuel Holt uh, to the UMass Dartmouth Archive. Uh, these gifts are now on view uh, in the Star Store Gallery exhibition. I would also like to thank and acknowledge the support and assistance of Henry Luce Foundation's American Art Program. Uh, they allowed us to bring this multi-part uh, uh, opportunity uh, they allowed us a multi-part opportunity to bring new attention and interpretation to an important work of art uh, on our campus and to an important work of campus sculpture. I want to remind you, uh, please, that due to the ongoing pandemic, CBCA requires that all visitors wear masks, uh, except for me when I'm speaking, uh, over, properly over their nose and mouth while they are indoors during our food breaks today, uh, guests are invited to eat and drink in the CBPA lobby uh, and, or in many of the beautiful outdoor seating areas that are built into uh, Paul Rudolph's architecture. I'm going to end this afternoon by introducing today's co-conveners uh, of the symposium. First, Kristen Spenson, who is an associate professor of art history at the University of Massachusetts, Lowell. I have Stalwin in 1960s New York, which was published uh, by Yale University Press in 2015. She is also the co-editor and author with Emily Lyman Scott of Critical Landscape, Art Space, and Politics, also published in 2015 uh, by the University of California Press. Kristen is currently writing a book entitled Public Work, Land Art, and Urban Redevelopment. A study of visionary parks designed by artists, including Nancy Holt, who conceive land art within urban spaces and often uh, as a form of land reclamation. Public works is supported by Graham Foundation Research Grant and the American Council of Learners Society Fellowship. We will hear more from Christian Benson in the second part of today's symposium. Rebecca Yusel is Director of Community Engaged Initiatives at CBCA at UMass Dartmouth and a lecturer in art history. Her curatorial background includes work at Mass MoCA, the Indianapolis Museum of Art, the Carpenter Center for the Visual Arts at Harvard University. She is a former postdoctoral fellow at the Center for Art, Science, and Technology at MIT where she taught in the Department of Architecture and organized a field-based research seminar focused on technical
political landscapes of the American Southwest. That was her first visit to Nancy Polk's Sun Hunt. She organized the Levine Lecture Series at the Bliss Visual Arts Center entitled Nature is Never Finished, focused on conservation of land art. She has presented her research into the power dynamics of environmental art management in venues including the Harvard Mahindra Humanity Center, the Watson Center at Brown University, the Institute of Fine Arts at NYU, and the Institute for Land and Environmental Art in Switzerland. Here uh, at CDPA, she has organized exhibitions including local ecologies, a co-curated exhibition, an educational initiative that traveled to three UMass campuses over uh, the period 2019 to 2020. In 2022, Local Ecologies will appear in book form, co-authored with symposium co-convener Kristen Swenson and published by Amherst College Press. Rebecca is the curator of the two-campus Nancy Holt, Massachusetts exhibition that opened today with this symposium. Thank you, Rebecca, and the symposium is yours. <coughs> And welcome Christina Pedesva, who you don't see, but she is listening to us live and she will be um, appearing virtually uh, in short order. Why don't you check in and make sure she can hear me now even while I'm doing the sound check. Okay, thank you, Dean Jenkins. Uh, I echo those words of gratitude for the contributions of support, resources, and collective effort that have allowed for this exhibition and its related programs to happen, and thank all of you for being here with us today. Nancy Holt was an artist whose large-scale sculptural work has dynamic and entrenched relationships to land and place, relationships that will be explored over the course of today's uh, events with particular attention to her relationship to Massachusetts. In that spirit, I want to open with reference to the ongoing work being done on our university-wide land use history statement by Brian Broadrose in Crime and Justice Studies. Broadrose's research shows that the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth occupies land where there is archeological evidence of prior inhabitation by Wampanoag ancestral peoples. It's appropriate to start today's events by acknowledging the Mashpee Wampanoag history of this place. Nancy Holt's 1991 Spin Winder is the entry point to our campus. For me personally, it was one of the most prominent and compelling features of the school when I began working here four years ago. At the time, I was doing research on land art uh, conservation approaches and was interested to learn as much as I could about the history of this work by Holt. As we discussed during this morning's tours, Spin Winder makes tribute to our regional industrial histories. It also references Holt's personal familial relationships in the region. New Bedford was a place of family history for Nancy Holt. She writes about walking the streets of New Bedford with her grandfather and becoming, in her words, acquainted with the clappered houses, the widow's walks, the ships, and the old textile mills, as well as historic sites like the Whaling Museum and the Siemens Bethel. Samuel Holt, her grandfather, was the head of designing and weaving at the New Bedford Textile School, a predecessor institution to our university. Aunt Ethel Holt, his daughter, was Nancy Holt's last living family member, following the death of her own parents and her husband, the artist Robert Smithson. Through works like Underscan and Ransacked, which are now on view in our Star Store galleries, Nancy Holt presents two iterative portraits of her Aunt Ethel and the Holt family home. Holt wrote, this plain old house, which has now twice been the subject of my art, is my physical connection with genes and blood and family history. We'll hear more on this tonight uh, in the events this evening when we celebrate AHA night in New Bedford. Back to Spinwinder for now, Nancy Holt's Spinwinder made direct reference to the machines and tools of the New Bedford Textile School where her grandfather taught. She also buried artifacts from this industrial history within the foundation of the sculpture. This artwork is deeply connected to our regional history. It's also deeply connected to its site. 
which we see Holt thinking about in notes in our campus archives, where she writes that the site is bounded by a stone wall, a sidewalk, and the ring road, as it still is today. The relationship to site is the topic of our first session today. We'll hear about site specificity and adaptivity, and Nancy Holt's thinking about citing artworks in other campus locations. We'll also hear more about Spinwinder in the second session of today's events, uh, which are focused on systems, which includes systems of vision and systems of information. The main campus conversations today will conclude with a keynote from the illustrious Alina Williams. I'm so starstruck. I, I'm just so verklempt by the people we have here today. It's amazing. Um, I'm showing two images of Nancy Holt's electrical system. One, a test construction in her studio uh, from 1981. The other, a detail of the present installation in our main campus gallery. In a 1983 interview uh, by Nikki Donnelly in Circa with Nancy Holt, Holt said, I'm interested in taking basic technology like plumbing, like electricity, drainage systems, things that are essential now to our lives. We couldn't really get along without these things, but we've hidden them away, almost like we don't want to own up somehow to our own technologies. And I want to expose them, make people more aware of them. This is certainly what is happening in the exhibition now open in the gallery across the hall on level 1L. I do encourage everyone to make an appointment at using the sign-up sheet to see the installation. And this is the installation that's the topic of our first discussion today. Uh, before I introduce our panelists, the, I want to let you know the order of events for this morning. We'll have three separate presentations, uh, a panel, a remote lecture, an in-person lecture, then we'll have time uh, for a quick Q&A in this room, and just as we did this morning, some time for convivial conversation as we move to a break and have coffee and then reconvene for the next session. So in introducing this panel, I start with Shingo Furukawa, a machinist, metalsmith, kinetic artist, and CVPA technician. He received his BFA from the University of Oregon and his MFA from UMass Dartmouth. He's exhibited in venues including the Radius Gallery in Santa Cruz, the Grimshaw Goodwitz Art Gallery at Bristol Community College, and the Bannister Gallery at, at Rhode Island College, where his work was recently in the exhibition Rhode Island Imagines Peace. He runs workshops in metalwork, such as a recent summer session at the Penland School of Craft. Furukawa was the lead technician who supervised the adaptation and fabrication of electrical system for the present display at UMass Dartmouth. Shadrick Mulba is a UMass Dartmouth undergraduate student. Born in Monrovia, Liberia, he now lives in Worcester, Massachusetts. He writes in his bio, he's always had a passion for the use of technology in enhancing the human lifestyle, motivating him to major in electrical engineering. Mulba currently works as an assembly engineer inspector, making medical devices, and as a direct support professional, supervising autistic children with Duvero Advanced Behavioral Health. He plans to work with Dell Technologies on transmission lines. Derek Manu is a recent graduate of UMass Dartmouth. He was born in Ghana and lived there 17 years before moving to the United States in 2014. He attended South High Community High School in Worcester and recently graduated in May 2021 with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from UMass Dartmouth. He works as a technical support engineer at IPG Photonics and not on your program, but a surprised late-breaking addition, we are also joined uh, by Matt Lavoy, who was the designated project lead for the engineering team that worked on Nancy Holt's electrical system for their senior capstone project. Lavoy graduated this past May with a BS in computer engineering, and he's currently pursuing a career in production equipment design. With that, I turn it over to the panel uh, and request some assistance transitioning to Shingo's presentation. Well, uh, hello. Uh, thank you, Rebecca, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's really great to see those guys. I haven't seen them in like I don't know, almost six months. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really great to have team back together. Uh, just uh, I'm just going to go through the uh, very quick process of how we. Uh, took the uh, original Nancy Hall uh, electrical system into our gallery. Um, let's see, this is not quite working out here with this. 
Okay. Nope. How about that? Yes. Um, this uh, is the uh, one of uh, the original installation, and um, the format is relatively uh, uh, similar to the uh, the original uh, tall tower, short tower, and then the uh, 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 the uh, uh, respecting the idea of taking the uh, hidden infrastructure out into the uh, uh, the space. Uh, the challenge of it is to, this is another in, uh, different installation originally done in, is it 82, I believe? And so it's it's very space sensitive installation. So uh, the uh, one of the biggest challenges to make sense out of each space is, and then uh, respecting the uh, original idea and how, uh, it, it can be translated, and also the, uh, the, the there's also the, uh, the challenge of you know uh, making sense aesthetically as well. Um, we have pretty specific instruction in terms of the uh, requirement in terms of the uh, construction uh, that is uh, set by the uh, uh, Holt Smithson Foundation and. Uh, it's a it's a ongoing uh, conversation of how to respect the, the legacy, and then we also have to interpret, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, original intention uh, and the uh, translation of the the intention, which is, you know, I I've worked with as the uh, uh, fabricator for artists before, and in in this case, particular challenges the person that we are. Uh, having conversation with is yeah, dead. So, uh, um, one of the uh, original idea that came up from the uh, uh, the team of the uh, uh, electrical engineering uh, design team is the uh, sort of using the uh, the lighting as uh, sort of a pathfinder and. Uh, so we, we, we had various interpretation of it before we settled into the uh, basic layout, which is pretty geometric uh, in this particular installation. Um, and that, that's partially because of the relationship with, that we uh, had to create between the, uh, the walls and spaces and the uh, uh, existing infrastructure, which is dictated partially by the uh, um, the ceiling, which has the uh, uh, structural element that we can't really do anything about. And from that, uh, over several conversations with the uh, foundations uh, people uh, over Zoom, which was quite interesting, uh, and we developed the uh, schematic design and the uh, schematic for each towers, uh, some of those are dictated by the, uh, the uh, code and also the, uh, uh, you know, honesty of the uh, electrical, uh, 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 electrician's design. So we, we can't, di we, we try not to divert from the, uh, uh, the processes that are used by the uh, electricians and the trays so uh, some of those things are dictated by that, and but the uh, other things are dictated by the spaces and the uh, the overall aesthetics that we are aiming for. Um, so this was the uh, kind of final sketches, and here uh, our team uh, is busily bending uh, the uh, conduit. Uh, we, we made many mistakes and uh, the, a lot of conduit went into uh, uh, recycling, uh, which is totally fine because uh, one of the major challenges uh, to make it consistent over and over because there are repeated parts uh, and uh, that, that little block uh, was the uh, sort of like a, a trial and the error to figure out uh, what the uh, best configuration is. And we have three of them because uh, to 
match the uh, match that, and then the uh, uh, prototype uh, installation, and the uh, this was the final prototype which we sort out all the uh, uh, problems. So the uh, uh, this time installation went actually quite smoothly because we sorted out all the problems at that time. So now I'm just going to hand it over to the. Uh, uh, our brave students and uh, have you guys speak a bit. Shedrick. Hi everyone, um, I'm Shedrick once again. Uh, it was nice seeing all of you guys here. I was in charge of the for design, basically how the structure should be laid out in the main gallery. My experience with this project, it was very interesting. At first going into the project, I didn't know what to expect because I haven't really worked on an art project before. And I didn't really know who Nancy Hope was or what the electrical system was. So doing more research and researching on the project, it gave me, it gave me like a great visualization on how the overall structure is. And after everything was done, I was like truly mind blown like how everything turned out. Um, I was also very open-minded when going into the project, just because I'm an electrical student, um, and my background is in engineering, so I didn't know what to expect. But that was my experience. Hello, everyone. My name is Derek Manu, and I'm a recent graduate from UMass Dartmouth. Um, as Shingo has mentioned earlier, um, we trashed most of the conduits, and unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I was the um, lead of the conduit vendor. <laughs> um, working on this project has been a bittersweet experience for me personally, because after graduating, I'm sitting in the office 24-7, and I've not had the hands-on experience like I did um, during this project. With the adrenaline pumping, and the excitement of going into the day not knowing what to expect and what we were going to accomplish during the day. Um, I think Shedrick speaks for all of us when he says he did not know what to expect before the project. Unfortunately for me too, I had no idea what to expect. Mm -hmm. But with the excitement of seeing the design overall and thinking about what I'm going to be accomplishing at the end of the day, and making sure that we lived up to her legacy was what motivated me to be a part of this group to finish this project. And yeah, that was my experience. Uh, hello, I'm Matt Lavoie. Uh, as mentioned, I was the lead on this project. Um, mainly that involved keeping everyone on schedule and figuring out what was coming next. Um, this was definitely like a once in a lifetime sort of experience and you know everything everyone else has said is a hundred percent true uh, I think probably the biggest thing I took out of doing this is just to look for opportunity in very odd places because um, you know senior design project for computer engineering, everything was make a system to measure this and make a system for this kind of radio. And just seeing, you know, an art project on there and, you know, what's that about? And so overall, I think just looking for opportunity in places you wouldn't ordinarily expect is probably what I took out of this the most. So I, I just uh, want to uh, ask you guys uh, if uh, what one you know briefly what what uh, in, interested you in the first place to take on this project. Um, okay. All right, I'll speak. Um, so usually in class, we sit in um, a lab with um, electrical wires on a breadboard or whatsoever, trying to make connections and stuff to make sure something works, right? And um, when I saw this project um, in conduits, I was kind of um, amazed as to how the lights are on and where the wires are coming from. But 
when we got onto this project, I realized that everything was going into the conduits. Like I said, I had no idea what conduits were, and we trashed most of them. So um, all the wires were coming through the conduits and everything, and um, that was what motivated me to um, be a part of this program or be a part of this project, because I was wondering where the lights and everything are coming from. And as, like Nancy all said, she was trying to expose what we have been hiding the whole time and I'm trying to make us be a part of it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, as I said, most of what motiv motivated me for this is just that it was so strange compared to the other projects that were available. Um, and I myself am a musician and, and I love art in general. Uh, so when I saw a chance to do electrical stuff in an art context, I, I jumped right at it. Um, for me, just being different, it was something different. Um, like Derek said, when we're in labs, we're working on circuit boards 24-7. Um, and seeing how the overall piece of the, the prod, overall piece of the structure, um, I wanted to try something different, so that's why I was interested. <laughs> okay, well, uh, just you know, um, it, it it was uh, it, it was great to work with you guys, and uh, uh, especially concerning the uh, it was the first time you were doing anything like that, and uh, I have done those things a lot before, so I take things for granted, and just seeing it from like your perspective was really actually uh, kind of eye-opening. <laughs> reminded me of the first time I uh, tried to wire the, uh, the socket, basically. Oh, so uh, that was very interesting, and I'm, I'm glad that the, uh, uh, you guys were exposed to this and be part of it. Thank you. Thank you.